Hello, everyone. Um, today we have finally the wonderful and amazing Agne Sorry Gechi Vice, right? Yes, Vice. With, yes. with us from Sunrise, and I have also brought some um, colleague of mine who is also supporting with the Octane Academy, Joel Flückiger. So happy to have you both here. I think Joel and myself will more be the question guys. I will ask the question, and Agne is the content. Uh, uh, will deliver the content part. So really happy to have you, Agne. Thanks for uh, taking the time. And um, if uh, if you could both introduce yourself, I know ladies first, but I think Joel will make it quick and easy. So let's let him do quick introduction and then we go directly to you. Yeah? I will do it very quickly because I'm not so relevant today. <laughs> so yes, my name is Joel and I'm um, with Amir together, part of the Octane Academy. Looking forward to hear um, a bit of Agne today from her experience with Octane. Thank Please, you. Agne. Okay, so um, my name is Agne Gatsevice. I um, work in Sunrise. I'm part of the release uh, management and test team. Uh, in Sunrise, my role is um, the release manager. Well, it was until recently when we started uh, doing um, uh, agile uh, ways of working as well. So now I move to work with the agile teams and uh, my role there is a release training engineer. Oh, uh, heavy user of RTE. Team. Big fan know, of RTE. We know finally RTE. Cool. Yeah, yeah. we still, yeah. Yeah, we're still learning. It's a, it's a journey, but yeah. the interesting one. That sounds Thank very you. interesting. Thank you. Um, Agni, we uh, experienced last week, um, uh, you remember maybe we did uh, upgrade together from ALM Octane in your production environment. So can you, before we go into the questions with Joel, can you maybe quickly tell your experience, how is what, how it was and uh, how the process worked for the upgrade? Um, okay, so it was super smooth. And the part which I remember most is like waiting for the things to be backed up. And whenever things were backed up, it was like very soon, very soon. We went through one jump like from, uh, from uh, one version, did a couple of checks, everything was uh, working fine. And then uh, we took the last version and uh, yeah, seamless, seamless experience. Seamless upgrade. Great, great. Um, I think it will be more, you know, like a switch question. So I will uh, throw the ball at Joel and he will ask you a question and then it will be like round robin. Yeah? So we are, we are the guys who are more the yeah, application servers and you are the database. Yeah? Okay. Okay, Joel. Yeah, Lord perfect. Lord. So, yeah, maybe you can help us to understand a bit um, um, when you compare ALM QC and ALM Octane, what are the biggest changes? What are the biggest improvements? Or what do you like most now compared to, to, to the previous solution? I, uh, I have a small regret that it, we didn't take uh, Octane uh, sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the tools are comparable, to be honest. I mean, uh, uh, whatever we had functionality-wise, whatever we had in AQC, we have that as well, and so much more. So if I may start from the modern platform, which we no longer need to use uh, Internet Explorer, but we can use uh, <laughs> Chrome, <laughs> that um, everything is really fast. So this is, uh, I really like personally, and I also always receive very positive feedback from, the, from other users. Um, the testing team loves it. Uh, yeah, we really hear. appreciate how everything is uh, linked together how we can go from the requirements to the test case, to the defect and release. And yeah, um, the management uh, of delivery is uh, really improved and information is easier to navigate. So, so the, from a user experience point of view, it's a oh, big yeah. change. Yeah, it's a big change. And so um, while using what we had in AQC, we also really like um, all the social aspect you brought. Okay. So uh, the tagging, the, the following, uh, we didn't test it out the integration of the team channels because we just took the upgrade last week, but uh, we already used uh, your existing functionality, which, which was there where you can open the channel for, um, 
for all the relevant users. For example, yeah. where I use it is for the for the defects. Okay. So if some if information is incomplete or if there is urgently needed update, you just like open a chat, pick them, and information is there for you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Very cool. And I could go on and go on if I would, let's say, <laughs> if I look at the administration point of view, um, it's really improved because uh, I do quite a lot of uh, still administration tasks there. Mm -hmm. So, um, a, as an example, if I take workflows, which we had a long script in the past, and I would, I was always relying on other people to do that because I just didn't have the knowledge. Now uh, we can very simply, now I can very simply manage that <laughs> myself and mm -hmm. we can turn them on, turn them off and like extend if we need or yes. So this part also really liked. So it gives you some freedom to move faster somehow as well, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, perfect. And reduce okay. actually, I say the work as well, because the rules are so easy extendable yeah. and we have a lot of rules. We like yes, our I saw it to the morning with Stefan, so it's uh, a quite big list and um, really impressive what you guys have done. Um, th when you talk about the rules, just you know, I'm, I'm walking out of the agenda. Uh, I had two questions um, regarding the um, content you said. Uh, first, uh, what is the browser uh, you use within Sunrise? Uh, because Internet Explorer is not really something which is still... So Internet good. Explorer, we used it because of ALM uh, QC <laughs> and we are free to use any browser but I think everybody uses Chrome as their uh, most favorite one so we're not tied by the corporate use any certain browser mm -hmm. so uh, Chrome we use the most now. Okay and uh, in regards of performance the workflow scripts I remember that they were somehow you know uh, they always took some time to be executed and they were executed on the client side. Now, when you compare it with business rules, do you see any difference or any? Um... Um, I just see that they behave as they're supposed to behave mm -hmm. uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the running time. So uh, let's say if we talk about the rules, if I can be more specific, what we do, we predefine the fields. So for example, we have the field called project. So if I select the project, then there is a, a field release which gets predefined by the rule and it happens like immediately. Yeah. Equally with the users, let's say we have a field application which is linked with the user group who are the default assignees. So if I choose that application, I see immediately the needed user to be pop uh, populated in the, in the form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite straightforward and you straightforward and I don't see any performance issues whatsoever. So now we were talking about QC, you know, QC has been a long time within Sunrise. Um, so I think you have done the migration, right? Yeah, I was uh, I was leading this migration project and um, because QC was so long in certain race, we were really uh, postponing this, uh, this migration. There was so much data and uh, QC was so deeply integrated in the whole Sunrise infrastructure that, you know, uh, <laughs> we postponed it as much as we could, as, as much as we could. And then we said, okay, let's do this. So um, we needed to take the structure approach. So we really looked at, uh, okay, so uh, what do we, my, so we, we looked, we took data then we looked at users, how it's integrated, and then the workflows and synchronization. So let's say these were our like work blocks. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at the data, we saw, okay, so the requirements, the test, the, 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 the defects. So we uh, work with all the stakeholders within the company to say how much of information they need, how much we can leave behind. And then for users, we looked, um, we didn't have LDAP integration, so where we, we had to maintain the user list locally, mm -hmm. which is another improvement. Maybe in a QC, it was option to have LDAP integration, but we didn't have that one. So together with migration to obtain, we start using LDAP and we really like it as well. But it was a bit of a job to do the to do the cleanup of the users because um, we needed to map them, uh, we need to define them in the LDAP. So that was another work item. And then the roles, 
we had them um, 30 plus roles in AQC. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we really slimmed down on that as well. I think we didn't create any new role what you had, uh, what you what comes out of the box. We just okay. uh, check what permissions they have and which role and did the mapping. Wow, this is so. Cool. Uh, uh, so what was the that was another kind of big uh, big uh, work item to 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 do. The workflows I already mentioned, so we just needed to to read through ours and uh, see how uh, how this can be done, and integration. Uh, because uh, in AQC we had it integrated with uh, with Jira, with Confluence. We also had some uh, built-in tools with, within Sunrise, like in-house done, um, the reports. So that was kind of, I thought it's going to be a difficult and scary task, but thanks to the REST API <laughs> and uh, Amir support and uh, an expert on our side, they really, uh, they really tackled it nicely. So, um, yeah, and the devoted, I did not mention anything. And synchronization with the Jira, that was another core uh, requirement, which uh, we had to, to 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 get to have it done before we go to before we could do um, the migration. And here came uh, MF Connect, which we also like. I know it's forum for Octane, but uh, MF Connect uh, we. Uh, we use it a lot and uh, it does really nicely job for us. Mm, that's good to hear. And from a user point of view, maybe you can also talk about what the users that had to also go into this new solution and they had to make that, that step. How was that experience for them? Okay, so because uh, users onboarding and training was the last piece <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because course, first yeah. we needed to, to have a tool installed so we can start doing the trainings. Mm. But, um, so we got quite a lot of support from Amir here. He uh, he led quite a few workshops for our let's say selected groups. So we did um, Amir, you did uh, for uh, product uh, backlog management. Yes. And then uh, we had multiple sessions with the testing team. It was not mm -hmm. only let's say. Um, like let's say from Amir's side, he um, he showed the tools capabilities, but internally we also needed to 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 see whether the old process still fits the new tool. And we took an opportunity a little bit to review this process. So for users, we had multiple uh, multiple uh, training sessions based on their role. So um, for developers, we wanted to introduce IDE, which is still in progress. <laughs> it's still not rolled out, unfortunately. So. Uh, for project managers and uh, testers, we focused on requirements and testing. So, yeah, multiple training sessions, and the, we uh, we have them um, test system. We set up some time in advance, mm -hmm. uh, so they can have some, you know, uh, a Play playground, playground. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, the perfect. Trail to try out the tool. Yeah, after good. that, it was like big bang because everything was in one in one workspace or like one project in AQC. So we didn't have an opportunity to, you know, let's say migrate one group, see how they behave. Yeah. So just really mm -hmm. like when the time came, we just really need to move them on. Hard cuts, hard cuts. Hard cuts. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if I remember Amir was also on site at that day. Yeah. Yes. And I, and I guess good. this is. Would this... you say, which was your experience, Amir, uh, when you were on board? I think I learned a lot. So at you know my core learning for Octane, I learned a lot at Sunrise. Especially I think for you, the key was the planning before, the cleanup before. You had QC today, and you were using different kind of attributes. And the way you have managed this really impressive. And I learned this lesson for me um, that you cleaned up the source side, and then decided, okay, how are we going to use the target side? And manage the data transformation. It was really a transformation from QC to Octane, which I have not seen before. And um, yes, it is uh, true. I did a lot of uh, workshops and we talked about, but if I talk today to Agne, you know, I learn a lot. I 
and also to Stefan. They show me rules which I have not seen before. Yeah. <laughs> so this is really something impressive how quickly you guys have adopted Okin. And I think it's also because of the reason it's intuitive and um, easy to use. So the way you have done the whole migration and uh, it's now onboarding uh, the users, this is really a role model approach. So I learned a lot from my perspective. Um, I have a couple of questions, Agne. So you, you mentioned that you are adopting now more and more users as well as IDE integrations. Uh, do you have any CIs in place and what are the IDEs you are using? Is there any concrete um, information on this? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, for IDEs, uh, there is the users who use uh, Ecl Eclipse and uh, Visual Studio. Okay. And IntelliJ, we have also um, uh, we have also IDEs which currently, unfortunately, not supported and in a high demand. So that would be a Visual Studio Code. Yes, it's on the way, guys. Right? Yes, it's on the way. <laughs> um, yeah. So those, but um, the people, what like what we have not done yet, we didn't really had an opportunity to roll it out. But we have like a, a key user, so the, our like pilots and uh, the feedback is very positive. So I think it's just a matter of time and we, we have this done. Yeah. Um, and then if we say for, um, for the new, uh, for the integration, maybe what I didn't mention. Well, I didn't mention because we didn't have the pipelines. But whenever uh, once Actane came on board, we start using your uh, pipelines module for our uh, automated test. Mm -hmm. And we're running the pilot where we could also integrate the pipelines which, which builds uh, and deploys the application. Mm -hmm. So currently, um, pipelines for test automation and the pilot for deployment and, um, and build as well. Mm -hmm. There are so there are so many things which we uh, which still in the pipeline. Not so many. There are still things which still in the pipeline, but they are big. And I think once we we have them done, meaning the IDEs fully roll out and uh, pipelines fully utilized for the deployment, uh, it's uh, it's going to make a, a difference as well. So basically, you, what you have done beforehand in QC, you are already currently doing in Octane, but now you're enhancing to use further functionalities of Octane. That's correct. So I think whatever we had in QC, we had it from a day one, and then we slowly, slowly um, start using features which does not require big efforts, let's say big implement, it does, which is simple to implement. So I mean, like follow or <laughs> or, or open team chat. Or, or the dashboards, right? So those we can start, we start using straight away. Whatever requires a little bit of coordination, like IDEs or, or the pipelines, because they need to be done in the, let's say, I think it's just still internally, we were not um, not ready for, for that. We need to sort it out and um, mm -hmm. sort it out internally, the namings, the integrations, and then we can we can use it. And it's also completely a new functionality that you're benefiting. So I think that's normal that you cannot do it right from the first day, right? Because yeah. it's something new and then you have to also get to know it and, and apply it accordingly. Yeah, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Agne, I also plan to share my screen and show you Octane. And uh, maybe I will show you uh, different flavors of Octane. Um, I've done the same with Stefan, so let's see what your answer is here. Okay. Um, I hope you're not contradicting each other. <laughs> that, that's, that's a proof point for today. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and you will uh, tell me what is the yeah, configuration you are using at Sunrise. So okay. let me quickly share it. So basically, when you see my screen, let me know. Okay. So now you can see the Octane flavor. So first of all, um, I will cut this out. So here, so these are all the modules uh, you have, yeah, which for sure for the normal end user might be too much. And um, Octane can be used like this. Yeah? So you have the quality module, you have the requirements module, you have just the quality module without dashboard, um, you have quality requirement pipelines, you have backlog, team backlog, or you have just the requirements module with the three here. So what is the configuration you are having uh, within Sunrise so, for the majority of users, for sure? 
Uh, okay, so um, we used uh, the requirement module quite heavily for our uh, traditional waterfall deliveries. Mm -hmm. So in that requirement module, we have a data structure that we um, we have the folders which represents the release. And within the folder, the, um, the requirement document represents the, the, the top level the requirement document represents the project. And within that, you have all the all the requirements for the project and then related test cases and defects. And uh, we are big fans of this overview, not yeah, the overview. We are a big fan. And um, this is what the testing team also liked it from a day one that they don't need to define it uh, for every single item within the tree on the left hand side. Because let's say we manage projects in the same way. So we look at the same KPIs for every project. And in the past with the QC, they would need to define it every time there's a new project. They have to create the graphs and so on and so forth. Now, once we create the predefined overview, I yeah, save it in the favorites, and then um, it's applicable for every project. So this is very much uh, loved functionality. And here in this um, overview tab, we really uh, define what is in our, what we want to track. Mm -hmm. So we have, let's say, the first graph would, all, would always be the test progress, because it's really a, a quality indicator, see where we are. And then um, additionally, depending on the part in the project, that kind of would be like integration test graph, that would be a user acceptance test graph, and um, and then the defects, we would filter the defects per application and the severity. We look very much at the blockers because we want them gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this dashboard, this view, this overview view really uh, satisfy our needs when it comes to uh, release and testing management for the for, for the project. And this module is uh, also not only overview, but this module really satisfies our needs. So this basically, well, if I understand correctly, you say the whole waterfall approach can be implemented or basically what you have done in QC is represented here in this uh, module. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, don't get me wrong, we do have defined every component, which is, which is in Sunrise infrastructure. So we have quite a long list of applications. So they are also in the quality module. Mm -hmm. So let's say this requirement module manages our uh, waterfall project deliveries mm -hmm. and the main users in here are the project managers and test managers. Um, let's say if I'm an application manager, uh, I could go to the quality module, uh, select my application and equally I would see all the tests or all the defects which are there. Um, so while we using a requirement module on a daily basis uh, uh, for the for the tracking, we are still you know allowing and have it fully uh, set it up to look at the component point mm -hmm. as well. So there are two angles where you measure your quality. First is for sure you have to manage your waterfall delivery, but then also from the application perspective, you consume the application modules in the quality module, right? Yeah, just to, just to see uh, on application level how what are what is the status. Yeah. So the the functionality behind the application modules you are aware of. I'm pretty sure that there is a heat map as well. Is this something which you are consuming, or is it out of scope for now? Uh, currently. We not use this heat map, but I, I am sure we uh, can try it out. I think this is because how how yeah how how we delivering software and you know like every piece every project has a project manager and a test manager and the, the, like the whole team which cares about that uh, about that delivery. So I think this is this is why uh, it feels that requirement module used most. And um, there are yeah, a couple application managers who uh, um, who can uh, who can also check on the um, on the quality module. Mm -hmm. 
but I guess they also get a quite a good view based on <laughs> based on the on the projects which are in there. Yeah. yeah, and I think every customer also works differently, and I think that's that's also what it should be, how it should be used, right? It should be fit your needs, and I think uh, if yeah. the overview gives you the information you're looking for, that's I think that's perfect. Yeah. And then and as yeah, and the idea that you don't have to predefine it for every piece, it's it's very valuable. Mm -hmm. But once you define, it applies to all. Exactly. So you have the same overview KPIs, and you can really reuse it across the different waterfall deliveries. Yeah. And, and on the on the right side, you would then use the the the, the filters as well in some extent, or is that yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We do. Uh, I, um, mainly they would use them for um, filtering out the defects, for example, yeah. or checking out the test environment because we have a couple of test environments and uh, test type. Uh, if you just would like to look at uh, which tests are for UATs and user acceptance tests or which tests are for end-to-end. Uh, -end. So we, uh, we, we use that quick filter as well. Okay, okay very nice. Um, from the customization now, perspective. So sorry, maybe very quickly, very yeah. quickly, if I, could, if I continue with the, the module, so let's say requirements is used uh, most. Mm -hmm. But we do already have um, uh, an agile team uh, who manages their work uh, in Octane as well. So they would be using the team backlog module. So um, in, in, in there, they would uh, work on the tasks, the, uh, with the stories uh, and the test as well. So, so like here, yeah? So you exactly. Have... I know it's one team, but I, um, the rest are still using other tools, uh, uh, but the feedback from there is also positive. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. And the defect issues module, are, are you using it uh, uh, overall? Or? I, I think uh, the defect module is mainly used for the developers and uh, technical service guys. So uh, the technical service guys, they are taking care of the production incidents. So, so that they would not be linked to any of the project. So for them, there is no need to go to quality or to or to requirements or to let's say team backlog. The issue module would really satisfy their need, mm -hmm. and so they would be opening uh, incidents from production and would be following up on their status. And additionally, the developers, when they get the defect assigned, um, they focusing on the, on this module. Okay. Are you cool. already using vulnerabilities? No, vulner I can never say this word. <laughs> vulnerabilities. Thanks, Amir. Yes, exactly. No. no okay. Okay. No, okay. Okay. I know we do have, of course, we we do have a security scans and so on, but they're not managed in uh, in a thing. Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you one question regarding the um, customization and settings. So, what is your takeaway here? Um, what helps you here to get your day-to-day -day work done? Um, is it the rules or workflow? How so do you I guess work from here? On the, um, so here, uh, a lot of customization was brought in during the migration. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made sure that uh, whatever we don't need, we, we left behind. So during the migration, we brought the customized fields. Um, we had to uh, redefine the workflow ourselves, and we have quite a complex workflow for defects, even more complex than you have see here. We have maybe 13 phases. <laughs> so uh, um, it was easy to define, and we are sometimes still doing a slight adjustments where we want to block certain con uh, certain transition for the certain user group or allow certain transition for the certain user group. So the visual workflow um, setup is uh, is good, and uh, I guess rules we already discussed at the beginning. Yes. That I'm the big fan of them. Uh, I think uh, they are a brilliant feature. I think we should then give some feedback, Amir, then uh, to <laughs> offer. <laughs> definitely, definitely we will, and they will watch the uh, movie as well. Um, so this is a great. Um, I guess there are. Joel, you have additional questions as well. Or? No, I think from my side it's uh, it's very interesting. Maybe one, yeah, one little question. 
what part is the most important part when you migrate from QC to Octane? What is for you the thing that needs to, every customer needs to do, otherwise he will fail or he will have some challenges? What is for you the most important topic? I mean, Ami mentioned cleanup, which I think is extremely key. What is for you that, that, that little thing that needs to be done to be successful? Will I sound a bit like from, from the book if I say users? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, so the uh, users, end users or the users that will do the, the, the job? <laughs> the end users, you know, okay. that I think it's natural that people resist change. Yeah. And I know even though we are we were changing for the better product for like a, a modern and new platform, um, you still need to get their buying. Uh, so that was, let's say, the users is a key. Um, and then uh, just to really work with your stakeholders that you're not leaving anyone behind. Because yeah. uh, let's say for our, we really had some like quite few um, uh, uh, like items which were like must. Yep. So um, just don't leave one, anyone behind. Uh, listen to your stakeholders, get your requirements in place, and then off you go, do the planning and get the support from MicroFocus, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I know the interview, let's say, it's um, with me, but uh, we would have not done this without the support from MicroFocus. Uh, Amir was really there for us. And, um, and a very big thank you to, to Amir and the team. Thank you also to you, uh, Agni. We have one last question also on the agenda. What is your favorite feature? One, just one. Yeah, just one. You have to pick only one. Uh, I will. The most feature which I use now is the overall search. The overall, ah, okay, yeah. okay. You know, not the search per module, but the search, the, um, the overall search. So whenever I log it in, log it into tool, if I really quickly need to find something, I would just like type in something and it really gives me uh, immediately re returns the results. And maybe the you can share it on me quickly. Yes, this is a good idea. Yeah. And you don't need to let's say uh, yeah. Go to the place. You can just click on it, right? Yeah. I think I know what you mean. And now that you're saying it, I, I think it makes very much sense to me. I mean, maybe this is not, uh, I mean, the question was, what is my favorite uh, feature? So um, this is the feature I use most, but the favorite feature would be the dashboards. <laughs> 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 because the dashboards really uh, gives the, the status um, on the, with, the, with the glance. And if mm -hmm. you really need additional information, you just can drill down from, from there. Yeah. You click within the graph and you navigate to the to the very detail you need. So you cannot beat that. So, so um, I mean, maybe we should take that. So, so not the, the best feature, the one she uses most and the feature she likes most. Exactly, <laughs> Two different yeah. things. So very good. Thanks a lot, Agne. That's great. And Again, so much uh, to say, you know, I'm just so excited. <laughs> yes, and we, we plan basically, you know, I've also talked to Stefan, we will have another interview where we have a larger team involved. Yeah, so you, Stefan, myself, Joel, and maybe someone from the product side of MicroFocus or your project side, so we can uh, make, um, yeah, contribute to the community. And um, so first of all, really big thank to you, uh, Agne. Really, I, I appreciate this so much. Uh, you are such a wonderful and amazing person. You know, when I first met you, I really was so inspired from your uh, dedication and the way you drove the whole migration to Octane was really a, a role model. So thanks a lot for your contribution personally, um, also um, for the community, for the academy. Uh, thanks for MicroFocus. Um, yeah, it was really great to have you here. And, and, and Agne, I'm, yeah, of course, I'm going to add something. I have to. Agne, I can tell you, uh, Amir liked it a lot <laughs> as well. <laughs> so he really um, um, spent some time with you guys and he enjoyed it a lot. Yes. The time I was with you, I was not that much as Amir, but the time I spent with you was also really enjoyable for me. I think you have a great team there. And uh, I, I still um, see Amir's face when he's talking about uh, Sunrise migration and yes. how it went. And uh, I think he's still 
going to be here for you as well in the future. I think it's a, a part of his heart now. <laughs> I think it's um, not. I think it is. Uh, it's mutual. It's really yeah. mutual. Yeah. Um, so um, thank you for the good words, but additionally, it all goes back to you. Um, it's a good to make it personal, collect. it was the first project when I come back after maternity leave. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was it was nice to to be back in the environment uh, which uh, which it was which it was. We had a we had a mirror there. We had other very dedicated people. So for me, it was it was nice to come back to work, and especially when I had such an excited project, yeah. which led to the great results. So I think it was really a win win situation for everybody. So from one good project privately to not a good project in professional yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Sounds and great. Amir remembers we, we did the migration during the COVID and the home. Um, so we started the migration projects that we, we met uh, on site in Sunrise. But after that, we, we moved to, to home offices and there was like a screaming baby in the background yes. and everything. But uh, um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, perfect. Really, thank you, um, Agne. So, really, thank you also from my side. Thank you. It goes back to you, and thanks for having me then. Yeah, and take care. And so. Take care.